And we are live. Who you work with and what you work on is more important than how hard you work. Ryan, I know book Fridays, book clubs are Friday, but you turned me on to a book uh, yesterday that, or was it Sunday? I forget, anyway, Sunday or Monday, um, turned me on to a book that was absolutely outrageous. And I think I got seven minutes in, including the intro, and then I rewound it. And then I got seven minutes in, including the intro, and then I rewound it. And then I got seven minutes in, including, and it's like, I'm... I'm, I'm flabbergasted as to yeah. how cool this book is. And the first sentence that got me totally wired was who you work with and what you work on are more important than how hard you work. And I mean, when you think about that, you know, who we work with, enjoying what we do every day what we work on so enjoying who we do it with every day what mm -hmm. we work on enjoying what we do every day um how often that's overlooked yeah things like money overlooked for things like being able to work at home overlooked for so many things and yet it's really the nucleus of what makes us happy i can tell you that in my career my bad days usually come home as well as my good days. Mm -hmm. Right. And I, and I think, um, I think a little less now, actually, when I, when I really think about it, I think probably less now that I work at home, but I remember when I was working in an office and like, no matter what was happening during the day, I kept telling myself, I'm not going to bring it home. I'm not going to bring it home. That's like such crap. You always bring it home. <laughs> and so I, I'm just, I mean, before we dive into it, um, what does that sentence mean to you? It means a lot. Um, I think, you know, it's collaboration, right? And I think there's another, when you get further in the, um, in the, in the book itself, in the audio book, he talks about like, everybody thinks that, um, when you're at the top or when you're going to the top and you're, your are your quote unquote competitors, that you guys are actually like in competition, but what people don't realize is that you guys are actually in collaboration most of the time. Um, and I first saw that firsthand with, um, you know, Rogers and Bell, if anybody's here in Ontario, when they came together and they bought the MLSC, which is the Maple Leafs uh, Sports Entertainment. So all like the Toronto Raptors, the TFC, the Blue Jays and, and the Maple Leafs. And you think like, how can these two competitors, you know, they spend, it's like Pepsi and Coke and it kind of goes back to advertising from last week we talked about um, on positioning, but you look at these two things and then you think like, you automatically think like, oh my God, these are competitors, they hate each other. They don't want to work. One wears red, the other wears blue. And then you realize that they're collaborating at the top, you know, they're, and, and what I did some, I did some digging too. Some of the people on their board are, are people on the other board. I don't know if there is like a little bit something in cahoots, but that's not for me to decide. But, you know, who you work with is so important. And I think it changed over time because, you know, I I started listening to this book on the weekend too. And for everybody who's who's watching right now, the book is The Almanac of um, Naval Ravikant. And if, if anybody knows him, he is um, he's an angel investor. He's like a billionaire. Um, he just invests in companies and just sees returns. Um, he, I think he was involved with Uber. He was involved with uh, DoorDash, all those things like early and like he cashed out. But he's legit like a billionaire, you know, so. And he's I, almost I, never even heard of exactly right so i've heard of him because i've seen him on the joe rogan show and then i've always kind of like wondered okay who is this guy and things like that but then I, I i don't know how i came across this but for everybody who's watching out there there's always one book or a series of books in your life that change you um and i'm gonna put this onto the universe this book this audio book because i'm i'm taking it as audiobook i'll probably buy the book as well this audiobook is gonna make me extremely wealthy and i know that and it's just not wealth when we talk like riches and money and all that stuff like everything he talks about so coming back to what you say dan like you know who you work with and and what you work is more important than you know how hard you work and you know i shared this with like my other inner circle that i have which is um like three other toastmasters who i've just become extremely good friends with and we share our daily wins and i'm like that's exactly what it is you know and even in like the seven minutes that you listen to dan uh naval really talks about I'm not the smartest person. I'm not the hardest working. Some people might think like I might be a little bit lazy and things like that. But you know what? It's once you kind of build that out and 
um there's so much i sent it to you right away because i started listening to it and i'm like holy crap this has to really has to do with bridger um our, our crm mm -hmm. software that mm -hmm. we have and the one thing i don't know if you've gotten to that point yet but where he says that hey well there's two big takeaways already he's like a you should never be a salaried employee you should always have like um what is it divot and you should invest in company right so you make money while you sleep you know you're not trading your time for dollars um and another one that he really talked about that i sent to you was like you know he talks quite often about either if you're starting a company, you either know how to sell or you know how to build. And building is like coding and development, and all that stuff. Or three, you got to get people to come and do that. And you know what? I'm going to add another third one because this was important. Um, I don't know if you, I, I, maybe I'm spoiling the book for you, but it doesn't matter. Uh, he talks about <laughs> you know, what your hourly, your hourly uh, rate is, you know, and I, yes. I've, I've set my rate. He's like, whatever your hourly rate is, like enforce it. So if you were a thousand dollar person, don't even um, think about what is it if you are set standing in line at like a store to return something you're realizing like i'm returning this 20 dollars item it's going to take me an hour of my time my hourly rate is a thousand dollars or a hundred dollars or two hundred dollars like know your worth and then outsource yeah. everything that doesn't fit so he's like even cooking you know he outsources everything and i'm like holy crap like as a content creator one of the things I personally don't like is is truly like editing software, like sorry, editing the content. You know, I like filming it. I like scripting it. I like doing all that stuff. And sometimes I have some fun playing on DaVinci. That's why I have this computer behind me. But I really don't enjoy the process of editing, especially with my podcast being like 30 to 60 minutes long. You know, you sit there, you're like, oh, crap, it's like two, three hours. And I'm like, you know what? What is my hourly rate? You know, I can pay an editor $100 an hour to get this done. I can pay them $300 and I know they'll get this done. And then that saves me over three, four hours of time, right? So uh, coming back to today's topic and like who we work with, I think it's it's so important. You need direction rather than speed, right, Dan? Uh, yes, I, I totally agree with that. And, you know, I love the fact that he, he comes, well, two things. So for starters, just so everybody understands, this book is actually somebody that assembled all his yeah. tweets, his posts and everything and assembled it in a format that he put into a book. And I thought that was like, for me, that was one of the first super cool things is like, wow that's pretty cool i mean in, i'm interested and when you sent it to me I, I did reading on it obviously right away and i was like i'm interested to see how this lays out because people put i think a lot of their best stuff into content mm -hmm. and their best stuff into content yeah. so you know i've never seen a book created from co somebody's content but when it comes down to this i wrote down the three things that kind of hit me right away um so the first one, who you work with and what you work on are more important than how hard you work. The second is become the best in the world at what you do and keep refining what you do until this is true. I think that's pretty cool. So you're becoming the best at what you do. You're focusing on the recording. You're not trying to become the best editor. No. Right. I love editing. So I will edit as much as I can because I love the creativity that comes with editing. Um, and then this is the third one, which ties right into that. And we'll bring this back to logistics in a second. Apply spe specific knowledge with leverage and then eventually you will get what you deserve. Yeah. And I, I look at these three, Ryan, and I say, okay, logistics sales, who you work with, the company you work with, and what you work on, the freight you work on is more important than how hard you work. Yeah. I'll agree with that hands down 100% becoming the best in the world at what you do and keep refining it until you do, until this is true. That to me is like, okay, if you're going to, I, I realized very early on in my sales career, I'm a grade nine dropout. I realized very early on, I better get really good at this sales thing because there's an opportunity for unlimited returns, whether that be personal freedom, financial, I mean, I've had the privilege of traveling to pretty much every state and province in North America on business. So, you know, there's all these bonuses in our industry, but we have to become the best at what we do without focusing on other people's lanes, yeah. right? Like, like you just said something at the beginning that was so important, you know, at the top, all of these huge brands that on the, the surface look like they're competing with each other. Yeah. Here's one thing that's become very clear in both listening to, and I know it sounds crazy, but the first like eight minutes of this book 
and reading positioning is like if we go back to Coke and Pepsi, Pepsi drinkers are not Coke drinkers. Coke drinkers are not Pepsi drinkers. Yeah. There's enough people in every lane that need the service and product you have. Yeah. There is no competition. And some people might disagree with that and that's fine, but I don't believe there is because I believe in every market, no matter what, there's always people that are looking for what you're providing. 100%. Your audience is there. They're just, I, you know what? I tell that to a lot of people because like I think in my Toastmasters group and people who know me, I'm kind of like the podcast guy, right? Because I've shared like I do the show and then doing my own stuff and then they see my content and stuff. So a lot of them come out to me and they're like, hey, um, you know, I want to start doing content. I want to start doing a podcast and stuff, but I feel like nobody would ever be interested in me. And the first thing I always say, I, I stop them right there, Dan, and I, I say the exact same thing. I'm like, you know what? There's somebody right now scrolling or somebody that's looking for whatever content you're going to put out. They're waiting for you, you know, so do it. Don't don't worry about yourself, because I feel like we always kind of put ourselves into it. You know, that's yes. our ego talking. That's our emotion talking. But when we kind of um, and and one thing that uh, Naval talks about, too, that I really liked was like you find sorry, whatever you are really good at give it away for free because he talks about karma and he's Hindu as well. So karma is with Hindu and the third point that you made as well, right? You kind of give that um, away. Yeah. Everything will happen the way it needs to happen as a karmic duty. So I think that is so important. You know, your audience is waiting for you. So as a logistics sales rep, you know, like don't worry about the time. Don't worry about the tenure. Don't worry about anything. Just honestly focus on being better. Like you said, who you work with and what you work on, you know, like you're not constantly looking at the websites and Matt Dahl um, had a great LinkedIn post yesterday where he said that, when he got into logistics, uh, he did an interview with Steam and Steam basically told him that, hey, man, we just want you to focus maximum like 10 to 20 accounts a day. You know, you'll only be making maximum like 20 calls a day. Um, and he turned them down because he said, how am I supposed to build a business? You know, because he's come from sales, like door to door sales and like advertising. And it's a numbers game. And then he went to the second company and then he realized, oh. It's not a numbers game, you know, so any any freight brokerage is out there like kudos to you if you're doing your spray and pray or you're doing 100 calls a day, you know, you're not going to beat the person who's like researching 10 companies and actually has the information, looked at investor calls, uh, look at their DCs, know about their product, got into a store and checked out what the product, how it felt and all these things. Right. So I love exactly the point that you just made, Daniel. You know, Ryan, I'm, I got to ask you about something because you said something um prior to what you just said that's really interesting so when we said you know when you were talking about ego and how you know people come into it and they're kind of operating an ego would you see that more as um along the lines and, and i've really been exploring this yeah. um because i'm trying to separate the ego part from the way our brain thinks right and part of me is starting to realize that sometimes what we see as ego is actually just perspective because the only perspective we have is our perspective. Yeah. Right. So um, I, I don't know. I'd like to kind of dive into that a little bit and, and only because you mentioned it. So we're kind of going off the highway. Here. Yeah, no, no. Well, here's one. Today we, we didn't plan. So, you know, we, with this book. So I think I've been doing a lot of research on like scarcity uh, mindset versus like abundance mindset. Yeah. And you're going to, you're going to be so happy with saying that when I say, when I say what the next thing I'm going to say, um, I'm really starting to like Bob Proctor. Um, but, uh, <laughs> he, is, he is awesome. He is, and I know you awesome, said he's a pasty white guy. Yeah, yeah. But he's he awesome. Is, man. I'm, I'm <laughs> you know, his, the law, like his, the universe has brought his in as I'm doing like more research on abundance mindset. And I think, you know, you know that's he's, he's, He's sorry to interrupt you, but you know how you were talking about like one to three books, you know, what, what we talk about, we're like one to three books, you stick with one to three, like Bob Proctor literally built his entire career off Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon. Hill. See, Like this man read that book. He probably could have recited that book. Now, now rest in peace, Bob. Amazing man. He probably could have recited that book. He built his entire career off one book. See, and that's what I feel one like book. this book is going to do for me. I, I I hope it does the same thing for you as well. But the one that we're on right now, the, the, the what we're talking about right now, this is the one. Like, I know it for a fact, you know, this is the one that's going to change had my that, life. Like, you got that feeling right when you I started listening to it? Or what was it that gave you that feeling? I'm really interested in it. So it's it's like listening to the things. And you know what? It's, hey, hey man, it's it goes back to your logis logistics training too. Right message at the right time for the right person. Mm. Right? So I was listening to this um, on my way to go do something. And 
you know, he was just dropping bombs after bombs after bomb. Sorry, that's that's insensitive to what's going on. But he was just dropping facts after facts after facts. And I'm like, <laughs> holy, holy <laughs> minute. And then I realized, like, like, he didn't even write this book. Like, you know, this is not him. Like, this is not because like a lot of like if you do a biography of things like they're going to fluff it up. Right. This is literally his own words that he shared throughout his life. And he's got a he's got the credibility. Right. He's an he's an angel investor. He's living the life that I want to live. B, he's coming from like the same thing. Like you said, his parents, they came from India. They were dirt poor. Um, his dad was had, I believe he was a doctor, but because they didn't uh, recognize his degree and all this stuff, I think he he did some kind of like blue collar work. Um, so money was always tight and things like that. And then he just started talking about his, his journey of what's worked for him. And then it's just, I don't know, it's something about this has been like just tying that with the abundance mindset and things like that. But coming back to your question, I want to get back into the ego and perception. You know, I think we are our biggest critics if that makes sense um yes, and you know we, we, yep. yeah we got perception we got our ego but i think reading when we were reading that eckhart tolle thing you know i want people to understand that you know when we talk about ego i don't think about ego in such a negative context like it's the worst thing in the world i think it's like that duality right i don't think we could ever really shed our ego you know it's it's gonna be um if and you know we talk about competition quite a bit you know for me as we're doing this podcast you know my intention too is to give value but a part of me is like i want to be the best podcast out there i want to be the number one you know anything i want to do in life dan i want to be the number one at what i do so mm -hmm. i think when you're talking about perception too because that is from our mind but it kind of ties back into our scarcity mindset right like your environmental things right because I'd love to play like I'd love to play the sandbox here with you. Like you might have maybe a little bit of a scarcity mindset from what you went through last year because you realize how precious life actually is. You know, mm -hmm. so you could have been like, maybe I got scarcity here, but on the opposite side, I'm gonna live my life to the fullest because not every single day is guaranteed. Right. So that's what I'm saying. That duality. Um, you know, you got the scarcity, you got the abundance, you know, you got ego, and what's the opposite of ego? Like, you know, humbleness, I guess it is, or down to earth. Um yeah, but I think they work in ego. unity. Yeah. I, I think they work in unity, brother. Yeah, I, I, I love that. I, and you know what? You're right. Um, it was it, it, ego in my question that I just asked you, ego was being played as a very negative way. Um, but you're right. There is that duality in it. And you just, yeah, I don't even, I'm kind of at a loss right now for words, Ryan, because you said it so well. Thank you. Um, there's really nothing to add. You know, um, the fact that you want to become the best at everything you do, I mean, that's a big Bob Proctor thing. You know, mm -hmm. he said, like, if you're a garbage man, be the best garbage man on the planet. Yeah. You know, like, really be the best at what you do. And and this is something that I've, um, you know, I've, I've, I've known, I've heard, uh, you know, like, I, I think it, it's normal. And I'm really focusing on, on that in probably the last two weeks. Mm -hmm. Um What's changed? You know, What's changed in the last two weeks for you, brother? Let's get into it. You that. know, it was, um, <clears throat> so it was actually something very simple, but yet I looked at it and I went, wow. So I'm part of a snowmobile club out here where it's all volunteers. Mm -hmm. And I was at a, a, not really an AGM, but a meeting of some of the top brass in the snowmobile club. Cool. And they said, hey, Dan, would you mind fixing the axle on the trailer? I said, no, not a problem. Give me all the parts. I'll fix it. So I fixed the axle. And after I fixed it, they said, hey, um, can you mount something to the front of it um, that we're going to put plexiglass on so mud doesn't fly up into the trailer? And I went, yeah. sure. So what I did is I looked at this beat up trailer and I said, okay, well, I'll just mount something here. So I'm going through all my steel and I had a pre-designed piece of steel and I'm like, oh, that'll work. So I put it on and I just welded it, right? Yeah. And then about three days later, I got asked to bring the trailer to someone's shop. And so I brought the trailer to the shop. And when it came out of the shop, he had cut the piece that I welded on. He would cut it off. And he put this piece on, Ryan, that looked like it came out of like a professional manufacturing company. Get out of here. Yeah. And I looked at that and I said, Hmm, why didn't I do that? Hmm. Why did I just grab a piece of steel and mount it and weld it? And I started really thinking about it. 
And I said, you know, why? Because I'm doing it in my garage and not at an actual company. Why? Because I didn't necessarily have the steel he had. Why couldn't I have made it or gone and bought it to build something that's professional? Mm -hmm. Instead, I was more on the line of get it out the door. Mm. And I realized that I've been doing that in a many different areas. And, you know, I, you go back to scarcity mindset, you go back to what I went through last year. And that's the mentality that I developed last year by saying, okay, just, you got to get through things and just get it yeah. done. So you can get more done. Push through. Yeah. Um, and, and I, I, so I kind of set myself up for that failure. Do you know what I mean? And I'm looking at what he did and I went, whoa, like, can I do it? Yes. Would it have taken probably two hours more? Yes. But I didn't want to spend the two hours because in my mind, I've got so much else to do. Yeah. And I think that can destroy the success of every task or thing we come across. Like, I don't really want to say everything's a task, right? Because some of it, to me, 99% of my day is not a task because I love doing it. Yeah. So it's not really like a, a task for me, but I guess it's the best way to describe it. Yeah. Um, so that's really where my mindset started changing a couple of weeks ago. Um, in my graphic design, in my editing, I'm taking more time with these things to get them done to the best of my personal ability. And that way, even if I need to bring in somebody after. Yeah, I was just going to say that. Yeah, like that's... It's like, 85 90 percent there and then they just need to do the other 10 percent. so you're not kind of i'm not leaving somebody like i did this gentleman with an absolute dog's breakfast yeah. right like i'm in my head i'm thinking and, and you know i won't even go there because i'm just trying to justify it the fact is i didn't do it in a professional manner i just kind of put pieces on welded it and said all right there we go and it's like out the door it's out of my garage now i can move my snowmobile over and do my lights and you know what i mean like that kind of thing just that more of that production line mentality yeah. as opposed to saying okay well maybe we're not building a ford model t maybe we're building a mclaren mm. or maybe you know like like so you go from those um hand-built vehicles from the production line if does that make sense like, yeah, yeah, no, 100%. I, I think that makes so much sense. And, you know, kudos to you for actually, like, like reflecting on that. And I think that ties in great into when you, whenever you start listening to the other part where he talks about, you know, find out what your hourly rate is, you know, and like, you know, if it's below it, outsource it, you know, no, no question about it, you know, because your time is because people think that, you know, if I'm going to outsource my time itself, you know, I'm just going to go and do nothing. It's not that it's just that you can work on more important things, right? Work on the stuff that mm -hmm. you're really like from, from this book and coming back to you, it's just, okay, what are you really good at? You know, and just double down on it. You know, even if yeah. it's a couple of things that you are really done, like there, there's the whole, like, what is it? Uh, jack of all trades, but master of none. You know, yes. you want to be a master of something, you know, you want to be a jack of all trades. And I think the jack of all trades is like something for like our previous generation. Like I would consider my dad a master, uh, a jack of all trades in terms of, you know, if I have a car issue, he can come fix it. If I have an issue with like our sink, he can come fix it. Like these were things that he's learned um, be, like in his like for me, I, I, <laughs> I got soft hands, man. The hardest work I've ever done is worked in a factory and I lasted two days. Um, but you know, like it's, it's the things that we don't have. And I think, you know what, I'm, I'm grateful that you're saying that because, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, and, and you know what, Ryan, most people would not say that. So thank oh, yeah, you. yeah, I know. I, I, mean, about that, right? I am that, uh, because that's how I grew up was Jack of all trades. Like I could do a little bit of everything. Yeah. Um, and it's, you know, I've also mastered a few skills, but it's, you know, so let me ask you this. So in this first part and what we're talking about today, because I know we're running out of time. Um, what do you, what are you changing? What are you starting to think about more and either stop doing it or mm -hmm. get better at it? Yeah, so that's a really good question. So I listened to this on Saturday, and so today's what, Tuesday. So for me, right away was decide, um, like, my hourly rate, you know. So for me, like, for everybody who doesn't know, like, I've been working from home for a really long time. So I actually got, like, a part-time gig at, like, a retail store just for fun. I work, like, two or three shifts um, if on, on that. And that's just really to get to meet known people and things like that. But after I listened to this, 
I was like, you know what? I'm not going to work any longer than a four hour shift. Anything over four hours for me, Dan, means that I literally like it's just not worth my time. You know, I, and I and, and pe- while I'm saying this, it might seem like it's ego, but it's just like setting that rate. So in my mind, I've already set my rate as, you know, as a certain number. If anything does not fit. So let's say I have to do this one task, like even if it's something I got to do cold calling, Dan. You know, it's a, I would never outsource this, but it is a conversation to bring up, you know, like I can hire somebody to do those to like do it like SaaS companies where they they basically book appointments and then I got appointments on my calendar. Another yeah. thing as well that I got through with this right away was, you know, I used to I have a calendar link uh, for everybody who wants to like book an appointment and stuff like that with me. It used to be Monday to Friday and then I'd be like, OK, jump me from this to this to this. Like I'd wait for that 15 minute, you know, that notification you get like 15 minutes before your meeting with so and so. I've moved, I've closed my calendar except for Tuesdays and Thursdays. Um, And it's only from 1 to 4 p.m. You know, so if you want to get me, you're going to have to book one of those days, even if it's up until next year. You know, so I've I've realized that's like, it's precious. It's more precious for my time. Um, And you know what? Like I said, the who you work with is so important. Like I said, I got my inner circle with the Toastmasters. We've already started talking about like holding events next year. Um, We actually started planning one for like anti-Valentine's Day where we're going to hold something together and kind of go from there. Bridger as well. Bridger is something that I'm invested. I'm a co-owner of. So that's for me, that's, that's my end game that like, you know, that's really what's going to help me move to the thing, not being like a, a salaried rep or, you know, trade my time for dollars. Like I, as the company grows, I grow, you grow, our other owners grow, our users grow, everything like that. So understand like that. And you know, another mindset too, is just like, when that is somewhat complete in terms of like, it's my time to maybe go off and do other things. It's like, okay, what's the next big challenge? What am I going to go start a software company or like lead sale? Like, it's so kind of cool to be something like, I'm not thinking as I'm going to be an, I'm an employee of a company. I'm going to be, you know, somebody who is a part of like the ownership, you know, somebody who's invested mm-hmm. in it and thinking about how can I make money um, while I sleep, you know, make it automatic. Mm-hmm. Right. And it started to happen already, brother. Like it's, it's crazy. Once you start going, you know, and start putting this stuff into action, you know, this already, you know, when you actually start taking massive action, um, how the universe uh, conspires with oh, you. Oh, it just, it, it all comes together. It yeah. all comes. And then this is, this is the big thing Brendan Burchard talks about is, you know, when you're stuck, take a step forward. Mm. oh shit i like like, oh i like that one yeah and he he says it all the time he says like listen like it it, no matter what you do when you're demotivated step forward motion creates emotion you know tony robbins said it best when he said that and it's it's that forward momentum when you're consistently moving forward this is where everything changes yeah everything and it's um you know it's the ability to sift through i'm gonna say and i don't know if that's the right wording and and maybe i'm getting my words rambled this morning but your ability to sift through what's really holding you back Mm. you know and that from for me anyways and, and and love love your thoughts on it for me it's that reiteration that works best yeah so it's it's you know Repetition is the first law of learning, I guess, for lack of a a better word, right? So repetition in what you're doing is how you learn. Repetition if you're going to edit. Repetition in getting in front of the camera and hitting record, right? As you continue to do this, you get better and better and better and better at it. Now, there's also a secondary portion of that, you know, in number two, where he says becoming the best in the world at what you do. That's intentional. Yeah. Right? So your desire to achieve outstanding results you know the desire to achieve more in a year than most people do in a decade um this is going to drive you to new thoughts it's going to drive you to being scared out of your bloody tree um which is a really good thing and you know if, you, if you're getting it more into bob proctor you'll know that because that scared that that feeling that anxiety that fear is actually a great feeding system for achieving outstanding results and you know it's in everything right it's like okay am i afraid of making that and so perfect example and i'm trying not to jump here but i think i am Um, had a call with with a student yesterday and he was he's been off of sales for a long really successful but kind of did what most people do in our industry when they get really successful they stop selling 
Yeah. And they start like working in operations or, or like, you know, digging deeper into the customers they have. And so long story short, over a couple of different things, um, changed companies and didn't quite bring all of the freight with him when he changed. So now he's gone from here to like here, right? From a numbers perspective. Yeah. So he's like, I haven't sold in like five years um, because he was doing so well. So it's this <laughs> whole new like, how do you sell? So I was like, well, the first thing I would do if I were getting in the sales now is do video. It's yeah. the first thing I would do. So I said, you know, I, I got him on SendSpark. And I said, you know, like, even just get the free account, use it a bit. Um, so he sent me, and congratulations to him, he sent me his first video yesterday. Ah, and go. we had the conversation because it was a holiday where he was. And I said, who cares? Are you in the office right now? And he says, yeah. I said, then go for it. Now is your golden hour. Right. Yeah. We get that from Jeb Blunt. Now is your golden hour. Do it. And so he sent me a video and he was like in a hat backwards and in a sweater. And I said, so all you do is you tell the prospect, hey, it's a holiday here, but I wanted to get this video message out to you. And that's why you're dressed the way you're dressed. Right. Like you don't even have to say this is why I'm dressed the way I'm dressed. You just nah, yeah. reference it. And he got like 52 videos out yesterday. And he what? got like 20 replies. And he's like over the moon. And I go, you see, it's so for me, it would be like, get really good at that. Get really good at like one or two things. And, you know, those are your, um, your catalysts. Those are your nucleus of your success. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, hundred percent. No, you got to start, you're building your foundation, right? Yeah. So kudos, kudos to that student yesterday for actually like putting yeah. action in 52 Super videos. Cool. Like for everybody who's watching out there, they're thinking like, for me, I can't even get through like 10 videos a day you know like it, that it, it takes a lot you know but with amazing software like sense spark you know it, they make it easy for you when you utilize mm. the platform and everything like that uh, perfectly rather than just putting on your camera and just start talking right um well, but like and he yeah, actually crazy. inspired me ryan yesterday to do a whack of videos i think i got through 42 yesterday after he sent me his thing and 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 here's the thing and and, and you know shameless plug um with bridger the ability to just click the, the user's profile and bring you right to their LinkedIn page. Then you hit the send spark icon in Bridger to start recording. So literally within two clicks, I'm recording a video message on their LinkedIn page that I'm emailing to them. And super cool, brother. It, it's like revolutionary. It, yeah, I literally went through, did 42 or 43 videos um, in I think an hour and a half, which it's pretty cool considering it's like record, insert, record, insert, record, insert. And it's like, it was so smooth, Ryan. And the it just felt so natural. And this camera was on and I was like, da 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 click, click, da 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 click, click, da 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 And it was so cool. And, you know, it's, um that's the applying specific knowledge with leverage to eventually get what you want and you deserve. Right? Like it's that specific knowledge and creating that leverage because you're doing it over and over and over again. It's a confident, competence, competence circle, right? So confidence creates competence, competence then creates more confidence and it just keeps looping around and around. And that's how the rings of a tree, in my, in my opinion, grow. And that's how we become solid like the base of an oak tree. Make sense? 100%, buddy. Sweet. What do you got to close this out, brother? What do you got? I to thought that was going to close this so out, man. Everybody get the friggin' book, man. Get the book. It's going to change your life. It's changed my life. It's changed Dan's life. It's changed everybody that I've sent this to. Um, yeah. What, what is it called? The Almanac of uh, Naval Ravikant? We'll, uh, we'll yeah. Pop it in here, the Almanac no. of Naval Ravikant. Yeah. Get it, man. It's going to change your life. Yeah.